Here is my six-year-old self-balancing robot. Yellow motors. And we'll see if it'll balance on this piece of carpet. Doesn't have any directional control, it's just self-balancing. But it's got a very tiny little program. I wanted to make the smallest program possible and make it where it would balance in place. Right. Now let's see if it will balance on smooth surface. Oh. Let me restart it. It's drifting some table. Probably not perfectly smooth. So without encoders on the wheels, it will drift. It's going to drift right off the table. I'm not careful. Anyway, there we go. And hey, living on the edge. software issues and stuff. So I'll just basically read off the comments in my program. Uh, this is a uh, Arduino code for self-balancing robot using these 48 to 1 uh, gear ratioed 150 RPM yellow motors with no encoders. Um, and the majority of my code uh, that I'll show in the video was taken from Midhoon's uh, Instructable site, uh, Arduino Self-Balancing Robot. Hardware. I'll start with the L298N uh, motor driver. Uh, if you're building this thing, be sure these jumpers are installed, the, the enabled uh, A and B. Um, so there's only four wires coming from this to the Arduino. Um, well, actually, there's also a ground. You need to ground the L298 to the Arduino as well. Um, and let's see. Uh, these drivers are really cheap. Uh, I had a bad one. So if you're going to buy these, buy a couple of them because inevitably you get a bad one. Same with the Arduino Uno. I had a bad one where one wheel would only turn in one direction. I replaced the, the Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno, it's underneath the shield, and it worked. Uh, let's see, I used two potentiometers in this one. You don't have to, it just makes tuning a lot easier. This one's to tune my P-term in the PID controller, and then this one is to change the set point, or uh, I forget what I call it, the, the target angle. So the target angle and set point are the same thing. So I can tune that with this, and it's just easier to tune it uh, using potentiometers. But once you uh, find a good balance, then you can find out what the P-term is and hard-code it into your program. You don't need this, this one anymore. Um, the MPU 6050, a couple of points about that one. Uh, first of all, be sure you calibrate it. If you don't calibrate this, uh, it's not going to work. 
Um, and also be sure you mount it with the x-axis parallel to the uh, axis of the wheels. So the x-axis is going like this. You'll see a lot of people, they mount it uh, with the x-axis going this way. Uh, so be sure you mount it that, that way. Uh, for power, I use a, a 2S LiPo battery. Uh, uh, when it's charged up, it's 8.4 volts. When it's discharged, it's about 7.4. And so that powers these motors, which are 6 volt. And it powers just this. And the other battery I use is this rechargeable 9 volt, and that powers the Arduino Uno. And it's good for about 15 minutes of playing. Uh, the motors are 48 to 1 geared yellow motors, 150 RPM at 6 volts. These are 6 volt motors. You can buy them all different gear, gear ratios, different RPMs. Uh, this is some of the slowest ones, so uh, they still work pretty good. And when the battery is running down, it's not even running at 6 volts, it's still working. So it's under 150 RPM. Um, Someday I will get the encoder. You can buy these yellow motors with the encoders on the top. And someday I want to do that. Oh, that's a project down the line. Wheels. The wheels, these are 80 millimeter wheels. And they're heavier than the usual 65 millimeter wheels that you get with, uh, uh, that usually come with these motors. So the bigger the wheel, the better. Um, the larger and heavier wheels make for better control. Uh, the counterweight. I put the LiPo battery on the top because counterweight always helps. Uh, so with a counterweight and larger wheels, you can compensate for slower motors. You don't need a, as fast a motor if you have a counterweight on top. And a counterweight on top is just like it slows the fall of this thing. So. Uh, it's easier for the motor to control the tilt. All right, uh, some additional notes. Uh, whoop, let me get back. Uh, when you're setting this up, be sure the wheels are turning in the direction uh, of the lean. So if it's leaning this way, the motors will turn this way to try to catch it up and tilt it back up. Um, in the program, do not use a low baud rate for the serial monitor uh, because that will cause the timing loop, and I'll talk about timing loop later, uh, to get out of whack. Uh, and it'll be so slow that this will not be able to balance. So just changing baud rate uh, in your serial monitor can mess up your program. So if you're going to use a serial, be use it at the 115-200 baud rate. Um, and according to a certain article in the comments, it says you should use a proportional term, the integral term, five times bigger than the proportional. So in my case, I'm using about 60 for proportion. And so for the integral terms, I use three, four, 500. And that works. It keeps it from drifting. So a high integral will keep this thing from drifting. Now you see a lot of these yellow motor uh, self-balancing robots, they're drifting all over the place, they can't control them, and it's probably the integral term. That's part of it. The other part is the timing loop. Um, in this program, target angle is another term for set point. So <clears throat> set point is the balance point. So that's the same, target angle is the same thing. Um, and the other thing, do not, do not use your delay uh, function uh, in your in your Arduino programs, it will mess up the timing. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now I want to share some of my opinions. Uh, number one, an inverted pen pendulum, uh, like the self-balancing robot, has a natural frequency that needs to be matched by the timing of the loop and the proportional term. So this thing is is uh, got a natural natural frequency going back and forth to keep it balanced. And if you don't match that with your timing loop and your proportional term, 
then it's just going to be jerking all over the place and you're never going to get a good balance. Once you find that sweet spot in your timing loop and your proportional term, this thing balances very nicely and it just kicks it back and forth. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. The timing loop must be consistent for good balancing or this thing's going to jump all over the place. So in your program, you can print out how long the loop takes to execute. And that's the main loop in, uh, in this case. That's the main loop in the uh, Arduino program. And you want it to run it at a hertz of 50 or 60, uh, about like your uh, electrical main in your American house. Uh, 50 or 60 is ideal. That's about 20 milliseconds, 20 millisecond loop. And uh, be sure all of your code is inside the timing loop or strange things will start happening. And I think that's one of the big problems is you see a lot of programs out there for these yellow motor self-balancing robots and they've got code all over the place. Part of it is in the timing loop and part of it is not. And you can use uh, the timers, Arduino timers, but I just wanted to keep the code really simple, so I just use milliseconds. Um, the high integral value, 5 times P, prevents drifting uh, in most cases. Uh, it still drifts sometimes, especially if the surface is uneven anywhere. It'll pick up on that, and it'll just start drifting. And that's when you need encoders to stop that drifting. Uh, this is probably the shortest, simplest, and most effective code to self-balance a two-wheel robot, in my opinion, I think. Okay. I would be happy to be proved wrong. Um, and it's, most of it's not my code, so I can't brag about it and take credit for it. Uh, this robot will balance and stay in place pretty much on a smooth surface like a stone floor. Most robots with these motors will not balance on a stone floor and or they will drift off and fall over. Um, they will balance only on carpet or rough surfaces. I think it is due to the bad timing loop. The MP6050 complementary filter code is effective. All right, so in the program, I use a complementary code. I don't use a Kalman filter. And it's very simple, very fast, and I don't know if it was written by Midhoons, but uh, it seems to work great. And in fact, uh, it returns an angle where the fractional part isn't jumping around. And I've used, uh, I've used the, uh, the fusion code, uh, DMP code, I think it's called, uh, in the MP6050. Uh, and uh, the fractional code jumps all around. So maybe I'm, I was misusing it or wrong, uh, misusing it. So I don't know. The complementary code is very simple, fast. Uh, the motors can be optimized. Now, I didn't optimize these motors. Uh, all of these motors typically will not start exactly at the same time. So you feed it a little PWM uh, motor speed and uh, say 30. And maybe that motor will start at 30. And maybe this one will start at 35. So you can optimize these motors, find out which where the motors start and then put an offset on one of the motors so that they both start at the same and that'll keep it from drifting a little bit and it'll also keep it from turning. And I haven't done that yet. So that will even improve the performance above and beyond what you've already seen here. Um, and let's see, I wanted, uh, uh, let's see. I started working on this robot six years ago, and six years ago I got it balancing pretty well on a smooth surface. But ever since then, whenever I turned the stupid thing on, uh, it it wouldn't balance. It would drift off, and I never knew why. And so now I think it, the reason why is you have to have a timing loop. You have to have everything inside this 20 millisecond loop. And if you have anything outside of that loop, it messes up the timing loop. And it messes up that natural frequency. Once you get that natural frequency um, connected with the P-term of the PID controller, then it's just like knocking a, uh, a tennis ball back and forth across the net. 
and it's all perfectly timed. Bam, 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 bam. Um, and finally, my opinions uh, are probably overrated because they are my opinions. But uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that if anyone builds one similar to this, any kind of frame, doesn't matter, um, but uses the 298, uses the Arduino Uno, MP50, uh, 6050, and uh, puts the weight on the counterweight on the top, uses this code, which is only like 140 lines, uh, less than 140 lines of code. And uh, pretty, I could pretty well guarantee that you'll have a, a self-balancing robot that will stay in place relatively on a smooth surface. It'll stay in place on a smooth surface. And that's it. Well, that was a big winded thing, huh? Mostly comments here. Um, and I already kind of discussed them all. Um, and you need to get the pins right. Four, five, six, seven. You're connected to the uh, L298 in um, I can't read most of this code it's too small uh, this is the routine that uh, drives the motor wheels if it's greater than zero uses plus 255 up to 255 or minus 255 pin out Define the pinouts. Uh, be sure you use uh, the uh, configuration uh, numbers from your uh, MP50 or 6050. And uh, it's one big loop, the main loop, and it's all inside this timer and runs. Uh, around 20 milliseconds for the whole loop. I use two potentiometers, one to adjust the set point or target angle, and the other, the uh, P, P term, KP. Um, if you're going to use the serial monitor, be sure you use 115, 200, run it fast. You run 9600, it's going to mess up the timing and it won't balance very well. And the PID here uses a complementary uh, filter, works very well. And <coughs> passes the <coughs> motor speed back. And <coughs> that's about it.